Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be looking at this Cambridge Audio Minx X201 uh, subwoofer with a fault on it. Now this is actually a fault um, I've had quite a few times now. Um, so we're going to cut straight to the chase. I'm not going to show you how I found it. I'm just going to show you what the problem is and where to look. So let's turn it on first and see what the problem actually is. Right, so I don't know if you can hear that. It's actually playing, but it's very distorted. So now I've just disconnected my test CD player from this uh, subwoofer. Let's plug it in now with no audio source in the back. Right, just put the camera on the tripod while I plug it in. See, as you can see, there's no audio source going in, but it is on, and it's making like uh, a load of noise in the background. Right, so it's out of its case now. Let's just take a quick look. So that there is the power supply, and uh, if we lift it up, that is the audio processing board on the top. Uh, and, of course, the... Um, power amplifier I see under there. Now on a few occasions uh, the fault's been caused by this STA309A uh, sound processing chip and uh, I've actually got these in stock because I've replaced these before um, but before you even get involved in downloading the data sheet for that and checking the pins uh, what we're going to look at is the output of the class D amplifier and um, if you look get it into some sort of light if you look behind them filter chokes there you can see four diodes um, and we can't actually get to them because they're all covered in glue but it's more likely to be one of them diodes that's short than it is uh, this chip here so what we need to do now is we need to remove all that black glue so we can get a meter onto them diodes and just check them out Right, so at this point I'm just going to stop the camera because we don't want to uh, damage any PCB tracks uh, which are running under that glue. Um, it's got to be very carefully removed. Right, so if you see now, uh, we've removed that black glue. Now we can actually test these four diodes because we've got access to the uh, other side. The solder was covered in glue before we couldn't get to it. Right, so that's D4. Uh, we test that with the analog meter. We've got the normal forward diode reading of about 10 ohms on an analog. Um, now I'm going to check the one next to it, which is D5. And uh, if you look at that now, we're on diode D5, uh, and it's actually dead short, 0 ohms. So we're going to change that diode. Uh, like I said, it's very common for one of these four diodes to go short circuit. Right, let's just go and have a look in the storeroom and dig some out. Right, so that's your culprit there, SS110. Uh, if we look down here, it's a uh, 100 volt, 1 amp, shock key barrier rectifier diode, that one there. So I've been and had a look through my stores and I've actually found them. Uh, now the ones I've got, I don't know why, they're slightly bigger in package uh, than the ones in the unit. But uh, let's whip the old one out then. So the first thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of lead solder on there to make it melt easier. Just like that. Right, so for removal, I'm going to be using the Pace uh, thermal tweezers and I'm going to attempt to do this while holding the camera in one hand. Uh, let's see if we can get it on in there. There we 
we go, that's the old diode off. Right, so that's the board cleaned up, ready for the new diode. Um, I've got the new diode there and the slightly bigger package. Uh, I'm just going to put a little dab of flux on there to hold the diode down and then we're going to have a, a tip change on the soldering iron um, and change that for a smaller tip so we can get down the back of the diode where that coil is. Right, so we've got a little dab of IF8300 BGA flux. Uh, no clean BGA rework flux uh, because it's very sticky and that will hold the diode. Second, I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time. So put that on now. Um, you'll see that the flux is so thick it's actually holding the diode down. So I've just got to reposition that now and then we'll do a tip change. Right, so the tip I'm choosing to fit the new diode in is this one uh, because we can actually bend round a corner very slightly so I'll just swap that over and then we'll solder this diode in right so diodes in position let's just solder that in now that's one side And we can bend round the corner and do the other side. There we go, perfectly in. There we go, job done. You can see the diode's very, very slightly bigger in the case. Uh, but that doesn't make any difference, you could get it in anyway. Right, so I've just soldered a couple of bits of wire to the diode so I can do this single-handedly. Let's just try it again now, it's out of circuit, and make sure it's a short circuit. And as you can see, zero ohms. So yeah, it's absolutely short circuit that. Um, I don't think there'll be any other problem. Let's just uh, plug it in and uh, see where we go from there. Right, I've just put two screws in the back for now, just to try it, turn it around, and as you can see, oh sorry, as you can hear, absolutely quiet as a mouse. Right, so I've connected the CD player to it. Let's press play. Now the vibration you, can, vibration you can hear is because the back's not screwed on. There's only two screws and the air's leaking out and it's blowing this back out. But stop the CD player and you can see there's no noise whatsoever in the background. Alright guys and girls on YouTube, many thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you in the next video then.